They may or may not be called upon to assist the architect with the design of the passive fire protection system, such as fireproofing and compartmentation. World Trade Center 7, which included floor spans as large as 54 feet, had a structural system design that is in widespread use in other tall buildings. The length of floor spans is important. Longer beams can be subject to proportionately greater thermal expansion effects, but such effects may also be present in building the shorter span lengths depending on the design of the structural system. We strongly recommend that building owners, operators, and designers evaluate buildings to ensure the adequate fire performance of the structural system. Of particular concern are the effects of thermal expansion in buildings with one or more features, such as long span floor systems, connections that are not designed for thermal effects, asymmetric floor framing, and composite floor systems. If thermal effect concerns are raised by this evaluation, possible retrofits may include strengthening connections, strengthening floor framing, increasing structural redundancy, and adding additional fireproofing to vulnerable areas. There clearly are ways available to address any concerns that are, arise from this analysis. But this situation should be analyzed by owners, operators, and designers for each structure on a case-by-case -case basis. Our take-home message today is that the reason for the collapse of World Trade Center 7 is no longer a mystery. World Trade Center 7 collapsed because of fires fueled by office furnishings. It did not collapse from explosives or from fuel oil fires. If col it collapsed because fires, similar to those experienced in other tall buildings, burned in the absence of water supply to operate the sprinklers and burned beyond the ability of firefighters to control it. It fell because thermal expansion, a phenomenon not considered in current building design practice, caused a fire-induced progressive collapse. We urge the building community to explicitly address all the effects of fire in the design of a structural system, including thermal e expansion effects in strengthening our building code standards and practices. Specifically, building codes and standards must be strengthened beyond the current intent to achieve life safety by preventing structural collapse in building fires where sprinklers do not function, do not exist, or are overwhelmed by fire. We will be accepting public comments on our final report until September 15, 2008. Directions for submitting these comments are provided on our website at wtc.nist.gov. At this point, I will be happy to take your questions. Thank you. Before we get to the questions, I'll briefly describe the format. We'll be taking questions until around 12 p.m. Eastern time, and we'll take questions from both reporters in this room and reporters registered on the webcast. And NIST Scale Porter will be reading the questions from registered reporters on the webcast. For those in the room, I ask that you wait until the microphone comes to you so that everyone can hear your question and please state your name and affiliation first. And with that, we'll take our first question from the floor. Hi, I'm Daphne Redder with the New York Post. You mentioned that sprinklers could have made the difference for this if they were operational. Is there anything else that could have made the difference? Well, I think um, sprinklers have a very critical role in buildings. Um, uh, sprinklers prevent sm uh, put out small fires and also prevent small fires from becoming big fires. Um, so that's probably the most significant area where a, an, uh, uh, a difference could have been made, but of course, it's in, in this particular case, we had water supply from the city mains cut off because of what happened in the towers, and it wasn't really the issue of the, f the sprinklers not functioning because there was something inherently um, 
uh, wrong with the sprinkler system. What it does raise, though, is that um, in, in the uh, New York City Building Code, um, the requirement, for it, this was consistent with the New York City Building Code, where the primary water supply for the lower floors of this particular building were provided by the city mains, and the backup water supply, which came through f pumps, also came from the city mains. So the source of water supply in this particular building were, was identical. Uh, for the top half of the building, the water supply, the primary water supply came from overhead tanks, and the secondary water supply came from the city mains. So the, there was a redundancy or in the, in the water supply that inherently made the top half of the building more reliable in, in terms of the source of water supply than the bottom half. Hi, Devlin Barrett with, with the AP. Um, this investigation for World Trade Center 7 took about three years. That seems a lot longer than you may have thought when you started it. I'm just curious if you could explain why it took so long. I, I kind of alluded to the, uh, that in my, in my remarks. Um, when we started this investigation in 2002, um, I think we underestimated the amount of effort that would be required uh, to solve the problem, the, the questions that, that were raised. Um, very quickly, we found that the, the collapse analysis of the towers were incredibly complex undertakings. Uh, never before had uh, that, the, the, the complexity of that analysis has been done where we actually were trying to simulate the airplane impact into the buildings, followed by the fire dynamics and the growth of the spread of the fires, followed by the thermal analysis, and then followed by actually what happened to the structure as it initiated collapse. Uh, so at that point, we put the World Trade Center 7 uh, investigation on hold um, until we could get that finished. Um, and then we restarted this in the September of 2005. And of course, we thought, given the fact we had experience with uh, the towers, that, well, we might be able to do things much quicker and much faster. Um, and of course, as you have heard, uh, there was obviously no plane that hit this building. Uh, there was some structural damage, but there was no uh, thousands of gallons of jet fuel spread to simultaneously ignite multiple floors in this building. So it, it was a, uh, a question was, why really did this building come down? And, um, and as we dug into it more carefully, we first looked at uh, whether the columns may have had uh, fuel because of the lot of uh, diesel fuel that was stored in the building, and we quickly uh, based on some calculations, figured out the fires that have been had to have been there for a very long time from the jet fu from the diesel fuel to actually bring this building down, um, and therefore we then had to look further. Um, and as we dug into it, we figured out that there was a phenomenon that we had not previously recognized in current practice: the issue of thermal expansion, which actually could cause this particular problem to happen. But that insight, we didn't have that insight till early last year, early part of 2007. And after that, it was so-called smooth sailing. Uh, but we had these horrendous computer programs, which, which took us uh, you know, six to eight months to complete a single run. So getting those programs correct, making sure they're, they're working correctly, the, making sure the results are being interpreted correctly, took us a long time, and we wanted to make sure we got this right then to actually rush and provide a solution to the public which was not right. Um, and of course, three years is not an unusual length of time for failure investigations. Uh, uh, you know, aircraft accident investigations take two or three years. Uh, building investigations of this complexity will take two or three years. So it's, so it's not unusual. We're going to take a question now from the web. Uh, Gail Porter will read the question. This is a question from Theron Shoa from Real News Radio, and he's asking, are you contending that fire caused all structural load-bearing beams to collapse at the exact same second and caused the building to fall in eight seconds? 